Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're on Forza Horizon 5 and I'm just making this video because well, it's something I intended to do not quite as early as this as I'm still messing around with the G93 but just to quickly get into my settings I had one of you guys asking me Rob, shout out to you man uh, this video is for you <laughs> and for anybody else who's got one of these uh, this is a Logitech G923 um, and I've been messing around with it a lot. I play a lot of Forza Horizon 5, uh, lot of, lots of F1. Um, but this video is just specifically for the settings that I've got that I'm running currently on the G923. Um, and let's just get right into it. So these are my settings. Um, and I fully appreciate that settings are very personal and also dependent on the wheel. This this wheel gives a whole new level of, of realism to um, Forza Horizon. I'm just showing you the advanced settings while I'm at it um, and you can take a screenshot and you can just use them but this wheel gives a whole new level of realism to Forza Horizon 5 appreciate it's not as powerful as most wheels so I play around with the settings so I can get the best feel for myself and I'm just going to run through them quickly and I can show you what like I mess around with them quite a lot I've watched a few videos on what other people have done and then I just mess around with them um, so that they're to my preference and I highly recommend that you you can take these as just like a template and then just mess around with them the best thing to do is just to take them out on a couple of laps and you know see how they work for you and your wheel and i've also noticed that these are slightly different to the settings that i use on the g920 some of the feeling between the g920 and the g923 they're slightly different um i i i'll actually have to get the g920 again and, and actually do the settings for that but they're slightly different but it's it's mostly the same just a few things that i would tweak slightly differently but let me just run through them from the top um obviously these i just keep stock vibration uh, <laughs> i don't know why that's off it should be on but anyway um yeah these are stock 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 everything else is fine i don't have i don't have any issues with the dead zone so i keep it at zero that's for the steering um no dead zone on my side so it's, it's perfectly fine the way it is um the ones that obviously you'll probably be interested in is from here going down and on the vibration scale i keep it high because i want to feel a lot of the vibrations coming through the wheel that's basically what it is if you turn them down then you don't feel too many vibrations coming through you turn them up you feel a lot of vibrations coming through um like the intensity of the wheel which is great so i like turning that up i like my force feedback all the way up um and this is the strength that's coming through the wheel right so i, I like feeling a lot of strength coming through it um but sometimes i try to turn it down i know some people have talk, talked about clipping um, I do like every once in a while when I'm going through a corner just as I exit I feel this little bah that comes through the wheel um, so I'm not sure if it's because of that I might just um, turn it down a little bit but I keep it like this I turn the center spring down um, this is basically as you as you move the wheel is that force is trying to center the wheel um, I keep it down I'm trying to do a bit of drifting as well and I watched a video where the guy said turn it down and uh, I tried it and I liked it like you find that even as you as you drive and you come out through corners um, the momentum of the vehicle straightens up the wheel so you don't have to have a center spring and if I'm correct um, uh, you know I heard that normal vehicles don't have a center spring and, and I, of course they don't right um, it's basically the, the momentum and your inputs on the wheel that determine which way it goes so I turn that all the way down just got 0 0.1 just a little bit the wheel damper though I turn it all the way up because I want to feel the strength coming through the wheel the mechanical trail um, because um, as, as you lose traction this makes you feel that loss of grip it goes light it goes really really light as you lose traction so I try to if you turn it to the all the way to the left by the way um, if you put it all the way to the right then you've got less of that feeling so I like feeling that um, you know like as I'm turning through a corner when I when I start losing grip I feel that that lightness coming through and that's basically why I've got it here I might play around with this a little bit more but for now this works for me the minimum force again is um, the lateral inputs, you know, like I like that heavy feeling in the car. So you'll find all the, all the settings that have to do with the heaviness of the wheel. I've got them pretty much high. Um, the load sensitivity though is the one that I play around with quite a lot. Now this is basically, um, as you drive your vehicle, you'll find that if you've got like a heavy vehicle, um, you've got that, that lateral load, right? Which is like, if you turn to, if you're turning to the left, you'll find that the vehicle shifts over this way. And then you will feel that through the wheel because you've got a bit of resistance coming through. And if you, if you should turn over the other way, you can feel that, that, that heaviness um through the wheel and that's basically what the load sensitivity is now what i found with this one is when i'm doing a lot of like 
um, like the off-road type games um, because it's a bit of a struggle to get right. You'll find that sometimes I, I have a lot of oversteer, which is where you get into a corner and then because of the load sensitivity, it, it's, it's trying to mimic that, you know, making you feel how heavy it is. But as it does that, it easily oversteers. Like it just goes into the corner and it's boom, you're turning all the way around and you're doing a 360. So what I try to do is I try, sometimes I turn it all the way down, like I'm turning to like 0.7 or something. So I don't feel that, if it, it's a nice feeling when you're just casually driving. But when you're racing, sometimes this, I, I, for me anyway, I find that this hampers the feeling. But uh, I play around with it. Sometimes I keep it down to about 0.7. Sometimes I, I've got it at 1. I, I don't like having it too high, even though it feels nice when you start off. As you race, you'll just lose your car in the corners. I found anyway for me. So, yeah, I had it at 1 just now because I was messing around with it. I'll probably put it a bit lower. But let's give it a 1. It's fine. And then the road feel, um, this is basically the vibrations that come through the wood because of the road surfaces. I turn this all the way down. I've got a G923, it's gear driven. You turn this all the way up, it's gonna get loud and clunky. So just turn this all the way down, right? And also normally you find that when you're driving on a real car and you've got a real road, you find that you don't feel too much of the, when you're on the road, you don't feel too many vibrations. But then when you're off road, this is probably where you might wanna tweak this a little bit and turn this a little bit higher. Sometimes I have it like this, so I can feel a little more bumps, um, especially as you go on the gravel. I don't turn this all the way up because it just becomes loud and noisy and clunky so I don't like that um, if you've got a different kind of wheel then maybe like if you've got like a um, a belt driven wheel or something like those Thrustmasters or maybe you've got a direct drive then maybe that you might want to turn this up a little bit so you can feel that but with these wheels uh, just don't <laughs> it's a mess uh, I keep my rotation at 100 degrees I've been playing around with turning the rotation down um, when I'm drifting because I find that you know it's a bit better but I'm still I'm not a drift expert so let's just let's just quit the discussion right now. I'll do a separate video for drifting later when I've got it right. Uh, everything else, lock multiplier is at one, speed sensitivity is at one, at max, and that's pretty much how I run it. Um, everything else is pretty much um, stock. The controls I pretty much keep the way they are. These buttons don't work. Well-known fact: if you've got a G923 and if you've got a 920, you'll find that the LSB and RSB buttons don't work in Forza Horizon. Um, which is just a bummer, but anyway, normally when I race, just getting onto my settings as well is I normally drive an expert. I also turn my, my steering's in simulation um, when I'm driving so I can feel as much of the forces and as much of the inputs through coming through the wheel as possible. So I keep that on simulation. Um, if you want a bit of a softer feeling and you want an easier to control car, then you can turn that uh, to standard, but I keep mine in simulation. I've got traction stability control off. Shifting on manual, sometimes when I've got the shift, I put it on manual with a clutch and I'm just messing around, but normally I've got it on manual. I keep the driving line on and scumbag rewind is always on because time. <laughs> Very cool. So yeah, I uh, hope those help you out. You can try them out. But again, the best thing to do with these settings is just mess around with them. See what works for you, but hope you hopefully you've got a starting point, right? Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hop into two races and just uh, I'll be talking through them. So what I might just do is normally I drive on expert. I might just turn it to highly skilled because I'll, be, I'll just be taking it easy. The two races that I used to test this out a lot. One is I take every car on the Vulcan Sprint, on the Vulcan Sprint. Now this is just, it's, it's an it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a uphill climb, right? It's a hill climb. Um, lots of corners, you'll you'll definitely feel what the car is doing as you go up this hill climb. So every car, when I'm testing out the wheel, I take it up on the hill climb. And then also for testing off-road, I just go to the top of the hill, hill and, then, uh, and then I take it down this way. Um, that also helps me to feel what the car is doing. So, uh, so I'm just gonna do two quick races. Let's just start with this. And also, by the way, um, just while I'm on it, when, when, you, when you're um, setting up your cars, you'll find that your setups are very important when you've got the wheel. And you'll find with most of my cars, the all-wheel drive cars are obviously easier to handle than the rear-wheel drive cars. So if you really want to feel like a lot of like what the motions are doing, I recommend driving one of the rear-wheel drive ones because they are harder to handle. So if you can handle those, then you can handle the all-wheel drives quite easily. Um, so I do that. And also when I take them off-road, um, I get to feel that load and how the car handles with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 488 Pista. Reason being, it's an S1, almost 900. Um, and it's a real wheel drive car, so I'm going to take that. Uh, very difficult to drive. Um, if you can master one of these and you can really feel what it's doing with the wheel, then you've got your setup on point. So I'm going to take that. Uh, sorry, not to add to favorites. I want to take it on the track. Okay, cool. Here we are. Let's just go for a quick drive, and I'll be commentating as you go. So if I come last, it's okay. Ooh, what's that? 
<laughs> oh, that's nice. Also, another, but it's a B700. So I'm not going to take that out now. But that, yeah, love the Porsches. Um, I'm a fan. But yeah, so we're taking out the Pista. And um, yeah, it'll give you a, a good feel. I'll try to talk as I go through it um, on what I look out for. There are a couple of corners that are a bit tricky. And you just ease, ease out on them a little bit. Also, just mind your throttle application when you've got your settings like this, especially when you've got, I mean, traction control and everything off when you've got the wheel, is I just, if, you, if, you just, if you're crazy on the throttle, you'll definitely oversteer and spin around, um, especially with the rear wheel drive, high powered cars. Um, but yeah, uh, let's take it for a drive and just see how it goes. Okay, there we go. That was an okay start. And then as you go through the slow corners, you always feel it because if you if you are hard on the throttle and you just boot it out, you'll feel that oversteer coming through immediately. Um, as you go through these chicanes, it's almost like a little chicane, yeah? Um, if, if your setup is wrong, your car will definitely spin out. I've done that a lot. And again, because of those forces, I can feel that um, force feedback coming through and the communication when the car is losing grip and just a quick shout out to the brake I can really brake late with this setup but again I'm not booting it too much <laughs> not taking any risks just having a blast what position am I? 5th and then through these corners here because it's a, it's a quick right left if you've got your setup wrong like for example when I've got that load sensitive on high sometimes the car just spins out here I felt it almost about to slip a little bit there but just caught it and this is cool yeah coming through the hours extremely late on the brakes but then again this is highly skilled um, driver tars so I won't give myself any medals oh, this part feels very good you can take this really aggressively and brake late <laughs> am I being too aggressive? Yeah, I am. But anyway, got him. <laughs> All the way off the road. It's Forza Horizon. Let's have fun, right? <laughs> and then through these corners as well. Um, there's a very fast right, left. Um, you can really feel what your steering wheel is doing through there. And again, if you've got it wrong, your car most likely spin out. And also through here. This corner here is a bit tricky. As you come through, I felt it a bit to slip out a little bit. They had a bit of a correction. And then just because they're a rear-wheel drive car, just check how you're applying your throttle. Um, if you are too fast, I mean, if you're too quick with it, you'll definitely lose it. And then this section definitely will tell you how your car is set up because it's really fast. When you've got a properly set up wheel, um, you can just boot it through these corners. I'm surprised I got that guy there. He's going slow. <laughs> but yeah. And then just to find a couple of corners almost to finish the lap. But this whole climb is just such a blast. There we go. And actually, I mean, you can see there, I mean, I had good feeling through the wheel. It's communicating with me. When it's about to oversteer, I can feel it. Um, it's communicating quite nicely so yeah that's, that's pretty much how I like my setup and it's kind of working for me now because I find that I can can break late I can take some of the corners really aggressively like you saw me doing yeah I mean I wasn't being even, even as aggressive as I normally am um, but yeah it was handling quite nicely um, the second track I always do and I try to take some of the I, I'm not a big like off-road um, fan but funny enough I always say that but when I jump into an off-road race I have a blast so let's go into this one. Uh, I'm just going to do this very quick. And what we're going to do is we're going to take one of the off-road cars. And I'll try to take one that's not... Like, I struggle with those with those Baja cars, right? So let's take one of those. Um, let's see what I shall take. Um, let's take one of these. This is an S1. I want one of them. I've got a couple of cars that are very difficult to handle. Um... Let's see. I'm not a big fan of the of the Hot Wheels. Should I have said that out loud? <laughs> uh, 
let's take one of these, the trail cat. Now, a lot of my off-road cars are all-wheel drive because they're so much easier to handle when they're when they all-wheel drive. I was looking for one that's a real wheel drive. I don't, I don't know if I've got any. Um, funny enough, but anyhow, okay, let's just go. Let's just take one of these. Just take the Defender, it's fine. But it's nice because when you when you take one of these these heavy cars and you and you blast it down the oh that's a nice car I actually like these defenders um, I used to hate them but now I like them but when you take it down you'll get to feel you know like the the shifts in weight and how it handles and this is a really cool test of your wheel as well um, and then again when you do these off road races depending on how like where you play like I normally play like late at night when the family is sleeping so I find that. I don't want that noise, and also I mean it's just a G923, it's, it's really loud. I don't like, there you go, oh, you see that there, I can feel that. And I was able to catch it, it was a bit of an oversteering moment. And you'll feel that when you when you take, oh my gosh, come on AI, don't just block the road. You can feel that clunkiness, it's making a lot of noise, I'll turn that vibration down. Because I can, it's, it's really making a lot of noise. That's why I normally have it quite low. I think I turned it up to 0.3 I think, just now. And the trick with this one is, is obviously like when you're doing these trail races, is <laughs> I, I find for for myself anyway, I tend to to take the corners a lot quicker than I should, and then I tend to spin out. But then what I then find that oh come on, is that when I've got my setup right, I can actually correct those old moments of oversteer. Oh, that's just oh. <laughs> that's just tricky. Didn't know where I was gonna land. Uh, and then I got hit from the back, but it's okay. And you see, like through there, my car's still pointing in the right direction, which is a testament to. Again, the settings are okay. Just I'm, I'm hearing this, the vibrations. I should turn them down. There, moments of oversteer, caught, caught it, and yeah, we keep going. And when you're starting out, just, just take it easy around the corners. You'll be fine there again. Oversteer, caught it. Loving the setup. It's really working for me. It's really, really working for me. The only thing though, is drifting. <laughs> but I'm still on the path. One day, I shall show up going sideways. Right now, trying to keep it pointing straight. And doing a great job. Look at that. Amazing. And that was great. There you go. Oversteer, caught it. One last jump. Oversteer again. That was a bit of a slow landing. <laughs> Take around the outside. Oh wait, you won, come on. <laughs> and yeah, that's how I set up my wheel, is I take it normally on those two tracks, or any off-road really, but yeah, I'm mean, try to see how it feels. If, I can, if I'm able to keep the car going straight, then I'm happy with it. And in this case, this setup is just working for me. Um, I might change it a bit later, but for now, this is my setup for Forza Horizon 5. Catch you in the next video. Peace out. That's so cool. Four hundred and five is special.